you're getting a Ryzen 5000 and AMD said, no cooler for you. Don't worry. Last time we looked at the budget and mid-range air coolers. Today, we're looking at the high-end air coolers and we're looking at liquid coolers from the mid-range to the high-end. And just for you folks that like to trick out your systems, I'm throwing in a couple extra coolers with some real bling to them. Coming up right now. Hi, welcome back to PC Builder. I'm Jason. Today, it's a winter wonderland as we look at coolers that can really bring serious performance headroom to your Ryzen 5000 build. Now, from the feedback I got on part one where we looked at budget and mid-range air coolers, I've decided to also throw in a couple of mid-range liquid coolers and a couple of high-end coolers with serious bling to them as I know some of you really wanna trick your builds out. Before we get stuck into it, I, do, I wanna say today I hit a thousand subscribers and man, thank you, thank you so much, I don't know what to say. We're still a new channel focused on breaking down all the technical mumbo jumbo and getting you the information that you need to get the best price or performance in your builds. So if you haven't already, please give the video a like and hit the subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when new content goes live so you can be part of the team too. With that, let's jump right into it. One of the biggest questions I got from the first video was about TDP. That stands for Thermal Design Power. People were saying, well, hey, the Ryzen 5950X, that's only a 105 watt TDP chip. So shouldn't I be able to take this puny little cooler that says it's a 150 watt TDP cooler and stick it on top and be just fine? No, you can't. This is an extraordinarily complex topic. So I will leave a link to a Gamers Nexus video that does a deep, deep dive into this if you really wanna know. Just know that the way that the chip manufacturers, AMD, Intel, NVIDIA, assign, and they assign, not calculate, they assign a TDP to the chip has nothing to do, or very little to do, or really nothing to do, with how the cooling companies come up with that same number. So you actually cannot compare the two. I know that's totally bonkers. It just is the way it is. Just be aware of that. Rely on third-party testing and recommendations for your cooler uh, sizing. Don't, don't focus on the TDP. So let's talk liquid versus air coolers because despite the fanboys on both sides, they actually do both have a place in CPU cooling. So at the budget and the mid-range level, the price of performance of air coolers, it simply can't be beat. Now, that being said, I'm gonna throw in some, some liquid coolers at the mid-range, just be aware that they cost nearly as much as the high-end air coolers. So for the high-end, I've recommended both air coolers as well as all-in-one liquid coolers. Between the best air cooler and the best liquid cooler, the best liquid cooler, it's just always gonna provide the best thermal performance. It's simple physics, albeit at a higher cost. Now, because of that physics, liquid coolers can also soak a lot more heat before they have to spin up their fans to really high levels. So this often does lead to lower noise levels at typical operating conditions, not just stress testing. Air coolers, of course, they're bulkier. So if you really wanna show off features like RGB on your motherboard and your memory, liquid coolers, they really are the way to go. Just make sure that the case you get is gonna be able to mount the liquid cooler radiator. Air coolers, of course, they can be expected to last for, you know, as long as the fans last, which that can be up to 10 years or more. Good liquid coolers, on the other hand, now contrary to popular belief, they do have a very, very low failure rate, but they will typically last for between five and six years until permeation really kicks in, at which point the unit, you either need to refill it or you need to replace it depending on the, the life of the pump as well. Here we are with the absolute top tier air coolers we're gonna recommend. The next three coolers, you're gonna be able to overclock up to the 5950X. And I would consider these probably overkill for the 5600X and the 5800X, but certainly for the 5900X and the 5950X, if you're really gonna push those chips, these are the things to get. Now, you're definitely gonna to wanna to double check your case compatibility and the RAM stick height because these things are absolutely massive. And finally, all the links to these products are down in the description. First up, we probably have our quietest premium air cooler in the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 4, which comes in at $90 US. Now, the cooler is massive with seven six millimeter copper heat pipes split between a dual fin tower setup, 
with a push-pull configuration, there's a 120 millimeter fan in the front and there is a 135 millimeter fan in the middle. Now, installation, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's a little bit of a pain and it does slightly trail the other high-end coolers I'm gonna show you in thermal performance, but it's two silent wings, three fans are extremely quiet for the cooling provided. Be aware there is a Threadripper only version of this, so make sure you buy the right one so it comes with the right mounting hardware. A link, of course, is in, as I said, is included in the video description below. To me, this also is just got great looks. It's all black. It looks great in the case, even though it is big. You can see it overhanging a RAM stick there. And I think with the top plate, it's just a phenomenal cooler. Next up is a cooler that probably needs no introduction, but just in case, it's the Noctua DH15 coming in at $90 US for the beige brown version. And there is now a Chromax black version. Oh my gosh, thank you Noctua uh, for that. It's, uh, we don't, if you don't care about the looks, this one's $90. If you care about the looks, the black one is $100. Now, sporting six copper heat pipes and an absolutely massive dual tower fin stack uses 240 millimeter fans in a push-pull configuration. Now, given the size, memory clearance is a big deal with this, as is case compatibility and motherboard compatibility, though I will say the newer B550s and uh, X570s typically don't have this issue where the cooler would sometimes in older motherboards crowd out the top PCIe slot, which is you know a real bummer. If you can overcome these annoyances, the Noctua DH15 provides incredible thermal performance and still a very, very good no noise profile. Ultimately though, this was the king, but we're gonna see the new king now. With our final air cooler recommendation, allow me to introduce you to the new, maybe technically ahead, but ahead, Deep Cool Assassin 3 CPU cooler coming in at $95 US. It very slightly edges the Noctua DH15 in maximum thermal performance, albeit at very slightly higher noise. Uh, Really, they're just neck and neck. With seven copper heat pipes and an absolutely massive dual tower fin stack, it uses two 140 millimeter fans in a push-pull configuration. Now, as with the Noctua and, and the Be Quiet uh, Pro 4, the memory clearance is gonna be an issue here. So make sure you go to PC Part Picker, put your build in, make sure everything's gonna fit. Don't get RAM that's too high. Listen, for the money, this is a phenomenal air cooler. You know, it's got a really cool black and metal color design. It's got a nice polished look to it. I really like that they've taken some time and, you know, added some logos to the top because this is a cooler you're gonna put in a high-end performing machine that you're gonna wanna show off. Okay, really quickly, let's talk radiator size. The radiator sizes are based on the size of the fan that's on the radiator itself. Now, standard fan size for radiators is either 120 millimeters or 140 millimeters. Therefore, the single fan units are called 120 millimeters or 140 millimeters. These are really best suited to small form factor builds. I would not use them in any kind of standard uh, ATX or micro ATX case, because frankly, by the time you're done spending all the money for these things, the two fan units are typically just a little bit more and they're gonna give you quite a bit more cooling. Not double, there's some diminishing returns in here, but more. The two fan units are called 240s and 280s. A lot of people feel like 280 is really the sweet spot in terms of the best price to performance. I think 240s are still fine. They do have less performance than the 280s, but frankly, they're pretty close in, in a lot of ways. That being said, if you really want to move up, you can go to a 360 millimeter cooler. Now you're going to run into a lot more case compatibility issues. You really want to make sure that your case is going to fit that 360 typically either on the top of the case or front mounted. Then the big, big, big coolers that are pretty rare, although I've got one for you here today, is the 420 millimeter cooler. And that has 340 millimeter fans for just massive cooling potential. Let's jump into the recommendations. For mid-range liquid coolers, you can already see they're more money than the mid-range air coolers. Uh, I'm gonna give you three different ones. And honestly, the cooling difference between them is relatively negligible. I think the only real functional difference here is the RGB lighting on them. So I'm gonna give you a couple of options and the cost. Uh, remember, links to these are down in the description. 
I think any of these is appropriate for honestly any of the processors up to a stock cooler for a 5950X, probably give you some overclocking headroom with a 5900X. I would consider these equivalent to, for instance, you know, the size Fuma 2, maybe a little bit uh, further down, maybe more like the Mugen uh, Revision B, that level of cooler. So again, this is a good cooler for a 5600X, a 5800X to overclock. 5900X will give you some overclocking headroom. 5950X, I would consider this an absolute stock cooler. And frankly, I'd again recommend something bigger. The first one's gonna be the Enermax Liquimax 3 240. This is sells for, you know, it's retailing for $70 right now for the RGB version. It's got a really nice kind of look to it. It performs quite admirably. Again, about the level of the um, the mid-range air coolers. So you can also get for $10 more, you can get an addressable RGB version. Coming up next, we've got for $80 US, the Cooler Master Master Liquid ML240L RGB version. Now this is the V2. They've made some small improvements over previous iterations of this. Again, uh, the, really the only difference between this cooler and the, the last one I showed you and the next one I'm about to show you is the RGB effect. So take a look at this one. If you like it, this is another well, very well-reviewed unit. And rounding this out is the id Cooling ZoomFlow 240X ARGB. This has addressable RGB, which is fantastic. I know a lot of people really like that. They like the look of this in particular. Again, similar performance to the two models I just showed you. This one comes in at 80 US, but for those of you building an all white build, this is why I'm recommending this one in particular. It also comes in white, in all white, and it looks, I think, pretty slick. $10 more, now we're talking $90. So this is, again, these are not the same price or performance as the high-end air coolers I showed you, but if you really wanna show off your build, this is a great one. I also think it comes in a 360 if you're looking for something a little bigger, that comes $120. You know, again, uh, if you like the look of this one, I think this is the way to go. Remember, links are down in the description. We're gonna start off our high performance all-in-one liquid coolers with what is currently the undisputed champion, which is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 millimeter variant coming in at $130 US. Not a lot of money, frankly, for such high performance. This is as good as it gets right now in terms of tested units. Uh, Gamers Nexus highly recommended this one. They did a head-to-head -head with another unit that I'm going to show you in just a moment. This to me is if you want absolutely the best cooling, this is what you're getting. There are two 40 millimeter variants. I believe this sells for $99. This would be fantastic for a slightly higher than mid-range build for maybe a 5900X if you really want to overclock it. Be fantastic for a stock cooler for a 5950X. The 280 would be phenomenal, but it is perpetually out of stock because this is the one that was recommended by Gamers Nexus. And they just cannot keep this thing in stock. You can always click the email me button up there. However, I do, for those of you who absolutely have to have the best of the best of the best of the best, they just, Arctic just released the Liquid Freezer 2 420 millimeter version of this thing for $152, which is not that expensive for a 420. 420s are pretty rare. And you will have some challenges finding a compatible case I did see a Meshify uh, case that will fit this for about $150. But if you're somebody who's putting together a 5950X premium everything and you just got to have the best, I would strongly recommend this. If you've got to have the top of the line performance, but you also have to have it look really cool and you don't just like the total blackout design of the Arctic, there is the EK 360 millimeter AIO RGB cooler. Now this was margin of error behind the Arctic in terms of cooling performance. So this is still the top cooler in the world uh, right now for AM4 sockets, at least for tested units, for tested units in terms of thermal performance and noise. It's got a really cool RGB pump block. Some people like don't like it, some people do. You know, you can you should check it out, see what you think about it. But if you're looking for a super high performance option that's neck and neck with the Arctic, but has RGB to it, this is a really good option. It also comes in, this is $154, a little bit more than the Arctic. Obviously you do get the, uh, the ARGB. 
And then of course it does come in a 240 millimeter variant as well for $120. I, I would consider this neck and neck with the, the Arctic 240 as well, rounding out our high performance liquid AIOs. Of course I had to include the NZXT Kraken Z63, which is a 280 millimeter variant and the Kraken Z73, which is the 360 millimeter variant. This is what I like to call the Henry Cavill special. This is the one he used in his build that lit the internet on fire. It's got this really phenomenal LCD screen on the pump head itself. You can do anything with this. You can use it to display the thermals for your CPU and your GPU. You can put cartoons on it. You can do whatever you want. It's just really, really cool. The fans themselves don't really have any RGB or anything to it, but I guarantee you stick this in your in your bill, just like Henry Cavill, you're gonna be one, one cool dude. Now it is a little bit more expensive. This is $250 for the 280 millimeter version, and I believe it's $275 for the um, for the 360. And if you wanna be like Superman, you're gonna get this. The thermals on this, by the way, are not that far behind the Arctic and the EKAIO. So I would get this and feel really good about any of the CPUs all whatsoever. Overclock the heck out of them with this thing. Wow, that's gonna wrap us up for best CPU coolers for Ryzen 5000 part one and two. Remember in part one, we looked at budget and mid-range air coolers. Today, we looked at high-end air coolers. I threw in some extra mid-range liquid coolers that I hadn't been planning on doing based on your feedback from part one. And I threw in the high-end stuff, including when with a lot of bling to it, because I know some of you in the comments said you really want some bling. There you go. If you haven't seen those, if you haven't seen the motherboard buying series for Ryzen 5000, I'm gonna put the whole playlist to the Ryzen 5000 series up here in the card. Check that out. Again, 1,000 subscribers today. Wow, I just that's just incredible. Thank you all so much. Please make sure to like the video if you got value out of this. Subscribe, because next we're gonna do, we're gonna start building some builds with the Ryzen uh, 5000 series. At least we're gonna start PC part pickering them. And I'm gonna help you plan out your gaming builds, your video editing builds. Stay tuned for that. Thank you so much. We'll catch you on the next one.